Okay, so Rachel's trying to figure out how to use her leg in a different way. So um, a lot of things that happens is um, riders tend to nudge their horses and be really nice to them, which is fine. If you can get a little nudge in and they listen, that's fine. But most of the time what happens is the horse ends up becoming dead to the eights. And so we have a tendency to try to use just this calf part, mostly right here. And then so nudge him like you were doing earlier. Yes. So the, yes. <laughs> now he'll actually react to it, but a lot of horses are dead to the sides and they won't, they won't do anything. And then you end up where you're constantly moving your leg all the time. So what you want to do is develop your muscles so that you can use the whole leg and the inside of the calf. Um, traditionally, you'll find most chaps have leather just on the inside. And if you look at the wear of your boot or your chaps, you'll find that it's worn on the back and it's not worn on the inside where it should be, especially for English riders. Okay, so what you want to do is lengthen this thigh bone. Good. And then lengthen this calf until it's feel like it's stretching. Good. Now, I want you to take my whole set of arms right here, and I want you to push against them. Ah, did you feel how your leg came off? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, what muscle did that use, Rachel? Hip cramp. Oh, it ties, your whole leg ties into this muscle right uh -huh. here. You'd be surprised, this muscle is one of the least used, then it should be one of the strongest for a rider, because this muscle ties into your hamstrings. Okay, this muscle ties into, ties into the outside and the inside of your thigh. Most of the time we go riding around the only muscle, and you'll find it if you're posting, especially the only muscle we use is the quad. And anybody that does fitness knows that if you only use one set of muscles, what happens? You can only get so strong. You must use both sets of muscles. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the supporting muscles around them. If you don't, you can only get so strong. So you have to use this muscle. So now using this muscle, think about bringing this calf off and then bump. So what you're going to do is let go. So you're going to bring it off and let it drop. Do you feel how strong that aid was? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So when you do that, this part of your calf comes into play right here. Okay. And you get stronger through the leg aid. Yes. And it's a hard, to, a hard aid to learn. Okay. So then as you get quick about it, you can go, hey, here, let me do it. Ready? Just relax. Okay. And as you get stronger, the thigh will learn to stay. You'll still use this muscle here and this muscle here, and only the calf will, will work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But you have to learn how to take it from your hip. So try it. Yes. Better. Okay. And this is a little weak in here because you haven't figured it out. It takes muscle memory. And every time you make a change, it's different and it's harder, but it's better for your horse. Okay. Now, are you, is that going to be your first cue? I want to clarify this. No. Okay. Your first cue is going to be squeeze my fingers. Yes. Do you feel the difference between that and what you were doing before? Yeah. Okay. The other one's like now, that. are you squeezing and holding? Where's the release? Oh. <laughs> How did. many seconds do we have? Three. Okay. I say two. You have two seconds. Because if you wait till three, we're, we're going to be here forever. <laughs> okay. And the horse is like, okay, already. Okay. So it's squeeze. One. Good. That was good. Okay. And then if he doesn't listen, then you use the muscle that's ties in here and you, yes. And see how you hold on at the end of it? I do, I don't relax it. Yeah, so you wanna bounce it. Yes, good. And then this gets all loosey-goosey, but your, that was even better, good. And then after that, your aid is gonna be a whole lot stronger. You're gonna get the crop or the whip out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, you want to, most of the time, most riders, if you have to go to the spur or the heel, your horse isn't listening to the aids anyways. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you want to be able to get them listening to this calf without cranking. Because as soon as this knee and this comes out, what happened to your hip there? Completely locked and open. and Yes. So now what two points are you balancing on only? What points are you on the saddle? Just my butt. butt yeah. Your seat bones. Yeah. Okay. So can you communicate completely and only through your seat bones? No. No. So you have to be able to communicate through this thigh. And so if you're turning and nudging with your heel, then you've lost this connection. Does that make sense? Yeah. And he communicates better through the thigh and this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Any questions? Any thoughts?
Now I know why my shoulders go all over. <laughs> Good. Okay, so the whole body is connected. Yeah. Okay, and the more quiet we can get here and here, the stronger our aids are and the less we have to use our extremities. So the whole object of being connected when we ride is to stop using these parts of our body as much as possible and use this section of our body. Okay? All right, thank you.